Willowbrook, by the time you see this, I will be in Asia, and I'll actually be sowing the seed of the gospel. That's what drew me to Mark chapter 4, because it starts out, parable of the sower. Then we have the parable of the growing seed, as the, the seed grows and, and brings forth fruit. Then you have the parable of the mustard seed, where it's talking about the mustard seed being so small, and yet it grows to be the largest in the garden. That's like our faith. It, it grows and it grows and it grows. And it ends with Jesus calms the storm, which Pastor Mark's already preached on. But you know, when we talk about the parable of the sower, our minds go to the different kinds of soil. And the first soil is a picture of a hard heart. Sin leads to rejection of God. And rejection of God leads to more sin. And if we reject living by the way God wants us to live as Christians, we'll put up more and more roadblocks between our relationship with God because God cannot be in the presence of unconfessed sin. The second soul is a picture of a shallow heart. You know, people can be drawn to the joy and the excitement of a church or of faith. They hear the gospel. They fit in with the activities that are going on at the church. They even might make a profession of faith and get baptized. But when the heart and the troubling times come into their lives, they fall away. The third soul is a picture of a strangled heart. Strangled by the things of this world, our daily pursuits, the things that we have a tendency to put before Jesus and when we do, it strangles our faith, it strangles our hearts. Nothing should be before Jesus. And the picture of the last soil is one of an open heart. It receives the Word of God. It lets the Word of God change the life. It changes our attitude, our actions, our desires, our lifestyles, and the things that we love. Now, when you plant a seed, you expect the harvest to be much larger than the amount of the seed you plant. You always reap more than you sow because that's just the nature of a seed to increase. You know, Paul says what a person sows, that they will also reap. Those who sow with tears are going to reap with shouts of joy. There's an old Spanish proverb, sow a thought and reap an act. Sow an act and reap a habit. Sow a habit and, and reap character. So character, reap a destiny. You also reap more than you sow because you sow with others. You know, my dad taught me how to be someone that was going to sow, not just the gospel, but sow my life into others. And he was one of the greatest soul winners. And so I've copied the way he sows the seed, and I'm drawn to that. So I'm going to encourage you, get out and sow the seed. We're losing our world faster than we're winning it. God has asked you, you to go out into your surroundings and share the love of Jesus. Throw the seed of the gospel out there. So what are the names of the people that are going to go to heaven because of you, because you shared the gospel of Jesus with them? I was in Africa, and it was late. We had been witnessing in the, in the villages, and one man was standing in his doorway. And our translator said, John, do you have time for one more? With that, everybody around me was like, no, John, we're supposed to be back. We're supposed to be back. And I said, there's always time for one more. We went into his home, invited in, shared the gospel with him. He was a chief of one of the tribes. And he looked at me and said, I have waited my entire life for somebody to come and tell me who the true king is. And now I know the true king is Jesus. Then he adopted me into the tribe. He gave me the name Masanja, which is child of the king. He's going to be in heaven because of the sowing of the seed. Can I encourage you? Open your eyes, look around you. Who do you need to sow the seed with this week? Tomorrow, Mark chapter 5. God bless.